pinch. Now, never ever cut with a box cutter towards you. At least that's what they say, so just be careful. Oh no, peanuts. <laughs> they still use peanuts? I thought they stopped using peanuts years ago. That looks like I've got some more flotation for my boat. Yeah! Yeah! Well, looks like I got myself some marine grade epoxy from the States. Woo baby! I'm more than excited. So the epoxy I'm using is a one-to-one -one mixed ratio, which means you don't need to worry about what container you mix it in, as long as you put equal parts into the same container. So in this case, I have an old two-liter bottle of tea. And I got some fancy uh, PET bottle cutters at the dollar store. So you just go ahead and punch a hole in any... I'm gonna go ahead and wash this out just because it's a little old. Now, simply take some uh, tissue or paper towels and dry it out. The epoxy has to be at a specific temperature range so it can work properly. And when it ships, it's exposed to cold temperatures. So you want to just make sure it heats up to a temperature that is good for mixing. Tonight what I'll be doing is I'll be going inside the seams on the bottom here and trying to <clears throat> seal it up with epoxy and wood flour. And this will be the first step to make, sh make sure the boat is sealed properly. And then after that I'll go ahead and move up higher and put some uh, fiberglass tape and whatnot and then move up higher and put in the bench seats. You'll notice with the bench that I actually cut it smaller than what it needed to be because my intention is to fill it up with wood flour and epoxy to create a special bond and seal. So that is my intention, even on that side. Let's go ahead and start mixing the epoxy. Huge shout out to Polymer Composite Inks for getting this epoxy to me. Not very many people ship all the way out to Japan, so thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm very, very excited to use this. So, I have the epoxy over here. It's been warmed up uh, next to my heater for about 20 minutes or so. I've been rotating it around and getting the epoxy back to its um, viscous state, which means liquid-like state. So this is two gallons worth of epoxy right here. This epoxy is really simple to use. What you're gonna do is you're going to mix it in a one-to-one -one ratio, so which means one part of the A agent and then one part of the hardener. So let's go ahead and get these things open. All right, so it's really important to use gloves and wear a mask because the fumes of epoxy is very potent and uh, isn't very pleasant. So make sure you wear masks and if you can, ventilate the area. So it's simple. So you got, you got your epoxy right here. So first thing is you mix it up one to one, so you fill it up. And you wanna make sure you do this in an area where you're not worried about destroying your furniture. So this table is a work table, so I don't care if this table gets dirty. All right, so this is a, uh, it's got about 90 minutes of pot life, which means that 90 minutes it'll be too hard to work with so you need to take your time and slow down and mix as much as you can and just don't 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 stress don't worry it'll be all right okay now i'm going to mix this for about two minutes you can see some epoxy bubbles flying up don't eat those okay those are, those are very deadly so you want to mix for a long time easiest mistake that people make with epoxy is that they do not mix long enough. So for those who are curious, the one the epoxy that I'm using is called Max Bond Low Viscosity. It's an industrial strength marine grade epoxy that I got from um, the internet. Palmer Composites Inc. The epoxy experts, thank you. Alright, so now we're going to go over here and take some wood flour. 
sure you don't get any epoxy in the wood flour box. And I'll just start mixing it in. And as you're pouring the wood flour, you want to start stirring. The goal is to get some uh, peanut butter like consistency. All right, after you've been mixing for a while with the wood, adding the wood, you should come up with about this much consistency. People say it's like peanut butter. So, in this case, it's epoxy butter. So let's go ahead and get it started. As far as what the tools I'm gonna to be using to spread it, <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and just take a, a hard foam board here, and I'm gonna cut it out of 45, roughly. This is what I'm gonna to use to uh, spread the epoxy. So we'll come over to the boat, and let's go ahead and get started. So, I'm gonna be filling in this joint here. This time I went ahead and put down some tape to help make it a little bit easier to clean up. So I have the joints taped off. So I'm gonna use the tape as a guide, if you will, to help fill in the joints. Over here was good, it wasn't too bad, but that's gonna be a lot of sanding to clean that up. So, so you put down the epoxy with the same ratio we did yesterday, but this time I'll try and use the tape to pull off the excess epoxy when um, done applying and make sure you do it before it becomes solid, of course, because once it's solid, good luck getting your tape off. See, look at that. I barely even need to sand that at all. So once again, you can see this side, not so clean. So I recommend for you guys to do the same. The filleting material I used, the last bit of it actually began to set before I could finish it because I had it in a small container with a lot of wood flour, which made it insulated and it, it heated up too quickly. But I was able to work with it, and uh, I, when it when it starts to set, you can't use the remaining. Now, I have the fun task of sanding this all down. <laughs> 